Okay, this is the laboratory orientation for the histology of esophagus and stomach, together with small and large intestines. Okay, uh, projected in the screen are the layers or the general layers of the digestive tract, starting from the mucosa. Mucosa is subdivided into three sublayers. You have the lining epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa. Second layer would be the submucosa. Third would be the tunica muscularis or the muscularis propria or muscularis proper. Okay. And lastly, would be the tunica adventitia and the tunica serosa. At this point, what's the difference between adventitia and serosa? Um, the difference is that adventitia is adherent to any organ, while tunica serosa is freely, no? hindi siya nakakabit sa organ at nasa peritoneal cavity siya. Okay? So we will be repeating this for every organ that we will be studying for this morning. Okay, let's start with the esophagus. Um, if you notice, there is A, B, C, and D. These are the scanner view of the esophagus that start with letter A. That is the sub, that is the mucosa. B is the sub mucosa. Letter C would be tunica muscularis, and letter D would be the tunica adventitia. So let's go to a low power magnification. These are the three sublayers of the mucosa of the esophagus. Letter A would be the lining epithelium. It is stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. Uh, sublayer uh, labeled as letter B would be the lamina propria. This is composed of a loose connective tissue with scattered lymphocyte. And in this area, you will be you will find the encircled structure called your superficial esophageal glands. The morphology of that superficial esophageal glands are branched, coiled gland, and they are located at the lower end of the esophagus. Um, in the lamina propria as well, if we ask you identify fundamental type of tissue, you'll answer depending connective, no sorry connective tissue. Uh, subtype would be lymphatic tissue and specific subtype would be a loose lymphatic tissue. On the other hand, if I ask you if the specific subtype of the lamina propria is connective tissue proper, what is the specific subtype? Obviously, it is also loose connective tissue. Okay, madaling tandaan. It's loose connective and or loose lymphatic tissue. Letter C the specific sublayer of um, mucosa, labeled as letter C, is a single layer of smooth muscle. We call that muscularis mucosa. Okay? What is the function of the muscularis mucosa? It also divides the lamina propria here to your submucosa. Ang clue, okay, class, ang clue for the submucosa would be the pointed encircled structure. These are the deep esophageal glands. Okay? Uh, the submucosa pointed by this uh, arrow is composed of a dense irregular connective tissue. Not present in the slide would be the Meissner's plexus. These are nerve plexus responsible for mucus secretion. This is to lubricate and facilitate the passage of food from the oral cavity down to your stomach. Okay? Now, at this point, uh, na mentioned na to sa lecture kanina, there are only two organs na merong glands sa submucosa. And this is one, esophagus. The other would be duodenum. Tandaan nyo yan. Take note of that. Esophagus and duodenum, glands are found in the lamina propria and in the Submucosa. The rest of the organs in the GI tract, ang glands lang ay, uh, ay matatagpuan sa lamina propria only. Okay? Alright. Uh, deep esophageal glands, what does it secrete? It's for the mucus as well. This is for um, facilitating the passage of food from the oral cavity down to your stomach. So, ang clue here is this one. If you see these glands, you are automatically at the submucosa. 
if I ask you what nerve plexuses are found in this area, you'll answer Meissner's plexus. Okay? All right. The third layer would be indicated by this bracket. This is the tunica muscularis. They are arranged in inner circular and outer longitudinal or eye call para madaling tandaan. And common questions asked here is that identify first lining epithelium. Oops, certified squamous. Tas merong maraming deep esophageal gland. So you'll remember that this is the esophagus. If I, if I want to ask this area, the tunica muscularis or the muscularis propria, no, they are subdivided into three. All right, you have the upper third, middle third, and the lower third. Ano ibig sabihin na? What are the significance of that upper middle? But kailangan i malaman natin kung anong type of muscle present in that area. The upper third of the tunica muscularis of the esophagus is comprised of skeletal muscles only. Okay? The middle third of the tunica muscularis of the esophagus is composed of both skeletal and smooth muscle. And the lower third is comprised by smooth muscles only. Okay? Now, if I ask you, um, this area of the organ in focus is comprised of what muscle if it is found at the lower third? Something like that. Ganyan yung practical exam question natin. And you have to know kung anong type of muscles present on that specific area. Is that clear? All right. So not just the type of muscle in the tunica muscularis area all um, paano ba? all throughout the digestive tract, there is a presence of our box or myenteric plexus here. The our box or myenteric plexus is um, found in between the inner circular and outer longitudinal. Nasa gitna siya. But doc, nasa gitna. Kasi kapag na nag-stimulate ang plexus na yan, it will promote peristaltic movement. So yung muscle, the inner circular and outer longitudinal would contract, would um, magkakaroon ng motor movement, nagmagkakaroon na siya ng peristalsis. Kaya nasa gitna ang our box or my plexus. Okay? Now, as a review, if this is the submucosa, the plexus is for lubrication or mucus secretion. And that's what we call your Meissner's plexus. While in here, the tunica muscularis, my enteric or our box plexus are present all throughout the tunica muscularis of the GI tract. Okay? Okay, and the last um, layer would be the tunica adventitia. It's composed of loose connective tissue and you may find blood vessels and lymphatic vessels as well. If it is a tunica adventitia, it is adherent sa organ. If it is serosa, it is freely um, uh, nakalocate sa peritoneal cavity. Okay. So this picture is a gastroesophageal junction area. The, the pointed area is the gastroesophageal junction. Why? Number one, look at this area. This is um, stratified squamous, non-cornified epithelium. And if nandito ka na sa area na to, mag-iiba na siya. This becomes simple columnar um, epithelium. This is the stomach already and this is the esophagus. So, um, pwede natin siyang tawagin na gastroesophageal junction, but this is also not the squamocolumnar junction. But don't answer squamocolumnar junction kapag tinanong kayo dito. Kasi there is also squamocolumnar junction that is found at the lower end of the digestive tract, which will be um, discussed in a while. So this is the gastroesophageal junction because the layer of which is the stophagus um, squamous, stratified squamous. This one is the columnar. Okay? Okay. So let's move now to your stomach. So um, one of the function of the stomach is to produce hydrochloric acid, intrinsic factor, so many digestive enzymes, aid, which aid in the digestion, initial digestion, or further digestion of the food that we take. Now, this is the scanner view of the stomach. And as you can see, it is exhibited by letter A. That's the mucosa. 
And if you look closely, look from this area up to air, to this area, ang kapal niya. No, uh, bakit? Kasi all gastric glands or glands in the uh, stomach are found only at the lamina propria. Walang glands sa submucosa. And if you look at letter B, labeled as letter B, this area is the submucosa. You will not find any gastric glands in that area. Okay? Letter C here is the tunica muscularis. And letter D, area labeled as letter D, would be the tunica serosa. That is found freely in the peritoneal cavity. Okay, so let's discuss the stomach. So labeled here are your gastric pits. Doc, ano ibig sabihin ng gastric pits? If ever yung gastric glands ay nag-secrete, uh, saan lalabas sa gastric pits? Of course, meron mga ducts yan, pero dito sa gastric pits lalabas. And the whole stretch of the mucosa of the stomach, so many gastric pits kasi maraming secretion ang stomach, especially for the digestion of our food. What else? This area right here from the tip of the pointer up to this area is the mucosa and it is subdivided into three. Namely, the lining epithelium of the stomach is simple columnar without goblet cells. Okay? Without goblet cells. But if you answer simple columnar alone, okay lang. Acceptable yun. This area uh, from the tip of the pointer up to this area is comprised of so many gastric glands. Okay? At yung glands na yan, merong cells na uh, pag-uusapan natin mamaya. Iba-ibang cells, iba-ibang secretion. Okay? And this is the muscularis mucosa. And the whole area, the whole layer pointed is the mucosa. Okay? This is the submucosa. You will not find any glands in there. No? Lahat ng glands sa stomach nasa lamina propria. Okay. So this is the low power magnification of the stomach. Lining epithelium is the simple columnar epithelium without goblet cells. Um, and circled here are your mucous neck cells or your columnar cells. They actually produce a thick coating of mucus that protects the gastric mucosa from acid and enzymatic secretion. Since the um, um, function of the stomach is to produce acid, which aid in the digestion of our food, kailangan may protection din ang stomach sa acid na pinoproduce niya. That's why mucous neck cells are found in the mucosa. Okay, this is the lamina propria. If you, if you see the, the bracket, it really contains gastric glands. It occupies the entire thickness of the uh, gastric glands which open into the basis of the gastric pit. So kapag may secretion dyan, pupunta niya sa gastric pits to release in the stomach. These gastric glands are responsible for the synthesis and secretion of gastric juices and they contain major cell types, which we'll be talking about in a while. Okay. These are the gastric glands at the lamina propria. But our concern for this uh, specific slide are the cells found in the gastric glands. Number one is the parietal cell. It's also known as the oxyntic cells. They are the parenchyma of the stomach. They are large round nucleus with eosinophilic cytoplasm. And their secretion is or are hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. This will, uh, these are discussed thoroughly in your lecture. But at this point, at the laboratory orientation, kapag nakita kayo ng malaking cell, na may malaking um, nucleus, eosinophilic cytoplasm, Parietal cell. Na, this is the parenchyma of the stomach. Okay. Next would be the chief cells or peptic cells or zymogenic cells. They are the most numerous in the stomach, but they are not the parenchyma. Okay. They are basophilic in staining, and their secretion are the following: pepsinogen and gastric lipase. Pepsinogen, when activated, uh, will be uh, will turn into pepsin, and when it comes to contact with gastric acid yung pepsinogen, nagiging pepsin siya. And that pepsin will aid in the digestion of your proteins. While your gastric lipases, these are lipases that are found in the gastric or in the stomach, which also aids in the digestion of your lipids. Meron kasing lipase din sa pancreas, pancreatic lipase, 
na nag din sa digestion ng fat sa pagdating na sa small intestine. But in the stomach, meron na rin gastric lipase that, that are produced by the chief cell or your peptic cells. Okay? So these are the two most common cells found in the stomach. Okay. In the submucosa of the stomach, it is composed of your dense connective tissue. There are presence of blood and lymphatic vessels. And in the submucosa, as well as I mentioned kanina, all stretch of the digestive tract, you may find Meister's plexus that is uh, responsible for the mucus secretion. And I emphasized this a while ago, there are no gastric glands present in the submucosa of the stomach. Next, look at the tunica muscularis of the stomach. So from esophagus na I call, ako na magsasabi sa inyo, from esophagus down to the large intestine, ang arrangement ng tunica muscularis is I call. Inner circular, outer longitudinal. Except for the stomach. Okay? The stomach, the smooth muscle layers are arranged in three layers. It is composed of your outer longitudinal, middle circular, and inner oblique. Again, they are composed of outer longitudinal, middle circular, and inner oblique. Compare it to the other um, segments of the digestive tract, inner circular, outer longitudinal. Lang. Okay? Ito lang yung um, exception. Okay, ano mo meron sa tunica muscularis? Again, what plexus? It's the myenteric or arbax plexus. Kapag nag-stimulate yan, magkakaroon ng contraction ng smooth muscle, it promotes peristalsis. Okay? That would be the esophagus and stomach. Let's go now deeper to the histology of the small and large intestines. Okay? As we all know, small intestine is composed of three segments. You have the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Let's start with the layers of the wall of the intestine. Actually, these slides, itong dalawang slides na to, no, they are applicable na for the whole intestine, either small and large intestines. Okay? Now, the mucosa of the wall of the intestine is composed, take note of the simple columnar with goblet cells. This time, if I ask you, what is the uh, epithelial lining or lining epithelium of jejunum? you'll answer a simple columnar with goblet cells. Doc, pag walang goblet cells, mali. Okay? Are we clear? Kailangan may goblet cells sa lining ng intestines. Ang stomach, kailangan simple columnar lang. Kung gusto mo lagyan ng goblet cell, dapat without goblet cells. Okay? The lamina propria of the wall of the intestines is composed of loose connective tissue and andyan lahat ng glands. Na except for the duodenum, mamaya pag-usapan natin. The muscular mucosa for the wall of the intestines is now composed of two thin layers of smooth muscles. The submucosa, still with dense connective tissue with Meissner's plexuses. Their tunica muscularis or muscularis propria, as I mentioned, it's eye call na all the way down to your uh, rectum. I call with our box plexus in between those inner circular and outer longitudinal. Your tunica adventitia is composed of loose connective tissue with some blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerve, while your tunica serosa is mentioned with mesothelial lining that is freely uh, at the peritoneal cavity. Okay. Your intestinal glands is also known as your crypts of Libercan. Okay, they're only found in the mucosa, specifically at the lamina propria. So from the small to large intestines, ang tawag sa nila is intestinal glands or crypts of Libercan. Okay, now there are four types of cells found. First is your columnar cell or your enterocyte. Now please take note, pakitan, pakipalitan itong slide na to. Nakita nyo yung panet cell. They are pyramidal in shape. They are found at the base of the gland. They are high, highly acidophilic. And they are the parenchyma of the small intestine. Um, um, ano ba? Deliberation, okay, uh, with my co-faculty, 
we decided based on Junkera and other books, the parenchyma of the small intestine pakilipat po sa enterocytes. Okay? Pakilipat po ang parenchyma of the small intestines sa columnar cells or enterocyte, not the panet cell anymore. Okay? Now we continue. The goblet cells are the mucin-producing epithelial cells. Your panet cells are found at the base of the gun and hindi na po siya parenchyma of small intestine. Enterocytes na siya. Our xanthophen cells or the enteroendocrine cells, they precipitate silver salts. That's why at the practical exam, please don't answer any enteroendocrine cells or argentophen cells. The most commonly asked questions are of cells found in, this, in, in the intestines are your enterocytes, your goblet cells, your panet cells. Okay? I have to make this clear. Parenchyma is the enterocyte for the small intestines only. Okay? Okay, um, projected in the screen are your intestinal glands. These are the columnar cells or enterocytes. That's the most numerous in, in the intestine. These are your goblet cells producing your mucus. And here, the highly acidophilic cell found in the base of the crypts or intestinal glands are your panet cells. No? That, but the columnar cells or enterocytes are your parenchyma of the small intestines. Okay, let's discuss the small intestine. Okay, first are uh, first is the duodenum. This is the uh, shortest segment with widest diameter. Um, as I mentioned, intestinal glands are found in the lamina propria, right? In the duodenum, that is an exception of the uh, for the whole stretch of the intestine. Meron pong glands ang tawag a eh, Brunner's glands or the duodenal glands of Brunner that are found in the submucosa of the duodenum. For the ilium, jejunum, and large intestines, wala na pong glands sa submucosa. Now, what are the functions of the Brunner's gland? They secrete an alkaline fluid and they are composed of mucin protect, protecting it from the acidic chyme of the stomach. So chyme, kapag kumain tayo at digest sa stomach, ang tawag na is chyme. Okay, syempre, nag-interact siya sa hydrochloric acid kaya pagpababa niya sa, slur, sa small intestine, specifically ang duodenum, meron ng Brunner's glands no? para mag-neutralize ng acidity ng chyme. Kaya nga siya alkaline fluid or mucus. Okay, that is the characteristic feature of your duodenum. Your jejunum, on the other hand, has prominent and numerous plica circularis. Your plica circularis, ito po yun, ayan mga yan. Now, your plica circularis is to increase the amount of surface area available for nutrient absorption. Your small intestine, majority of its function is to absorb nutrients. So if ever, wala kang makitang Brunner's gland sa submucosa at wala kang rin makitang like this, Peyer's patches sa ilium, you have to answer this as jejunum. And that is because of the prominence of your plica circularis. Okay? That is the second portion, the jejunum. And the ilium is the longest segment of your small intestine. There, its characteristic feature is or are the presence of pears patches found in the lamina propria. According to Junquera, they are not just found at the lamina propria. They may also extend to the submucosa. Pero... For the purpose of our examination, this large lymphoid nodular aggregates are found in the ilium only. Okay, and they are, they are called your pears patches. Doc, very po bang makikakita ng, il ng, ng mga lymphoid nodular aggregates sa jejunum and duodenum? Yes. Pero small in amount, smaller, pero ang tawag sa ilium is pears patches. Okay, and that is the characteristic feature of that specific segment of small intestine. Okay? This is another picture of your pear patches. They are most numerous in the distal portion, which is the ilium, apunta na sa small intestine. Okay? Okay, and this colon are, or is the large intestine. The characteristic features, number one, there are no more intestinal villi. No? 
Ang crypts of Libricon are still present, but they are longer and straighter than that of the small intestine. But all you need to remember in the colon is that the parenchyma of the colon are your goblet cells. Na. Okay? Meron pa bang panet cell? Wala na. Meron pa bang goblet cells? Sobrang dami. Because they are the parenchyma of the large intestines. Okay? Alright. So, this is the distal portion of the large intestine. This is the rectum. And goblet cells here are the most numerous, especially in this area. This is the rectum already. And this is what we call your recto uh, anal junction. This, this area. Bakit doc? Look at the lining epithelium of the anus. It's stratified squamous, non-cornified epithelium. And this is the distal rectum composed of plenty of goblet cells. Kanina, sa esophagus to stomach, it's also squamocolumnar junction. Right? Pero hindi mo pwedeng sabihin ito na esophagus and stomach kasi they are exhibited by numerous goblet cells. So at the rectum, it is simple columnar with goblet cells. Tapos kung nakakita ka ng squamous dito, stratified squamous, non-cornified. Ah, okay. This is the junction called your rectoanal junction. Okay? That is the end of the histology of esophagus, stomach, small and large intestine.